Hello, my name is Dominique O'Neill and I am the Programming and Hospitality Manager for Frameline 44. Thank you for joining us for the live Q&A of Leonie Krippendorf's Cocoon. Uh, this is a live Q&A, so if you have any questions, make sure to drop us a line in the comments of Facebook, YouTube, and Cinescent. Uh, we're so pleased to be showing this film today and I'd like to welcome our guests from the cast and crew. Hello, I am Leonie Kripenhoff. I'm the director of Cocoon, and yeah, it's nice to be here. Hi, I'm Yella. I play Romy. Hello, my name is Lena Olsendowski, and I play Nora. Hi, all. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so I'd like to ask about um, the film premiered at Berlinale in the generation section, um, which for our viewers who don't know is the coming of age program told through the lens of, of youth and young people. Um, and I think one of the really great things about this film is how it captures youth. Can you talk about how you achieved that? How it, okay, can you uh, say that differently? Sorry. <laughs> sure. um, can you talk about how you as a director or as an actor achieved um, the youthful, like, milieu of the film, like... Okay, yeah. yeah. I can start, maybe. Um, yeah. So, I've been, I'm 35, so it's really not uh, my, I, I'm not into that generation um, that Cocoon is telling about, so I have been writing the script, um, like, from my own mem mem memories, how I felt as a teenager, but then I had to have some um, research about what is different because now there's social media and kids are going up very differently. So um, I think I got that mostly in the time of rehearsal because we've been um, working with actors that like all of kind of all the nearly all the boys who who are acting in this film are living directly in the house or close in in that area so they know the world very much and um during rehearsal there was very much about like um is that realistic would you say that that word and or how how would you you know, like the wording was like, they totally changed it around and we did a lot of improvisation. And I think, um, yeah, Yella and Lena both have been uh, pretty experienced and they um, like in the rehearsal, we all decided for like one way of acting together. So, yeah. Lena and Yella, do you want to talk about how you tapped into the vivacity of teenagers? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think I never really thought about the age. It was more that we, in the rehearsal, we um, talked about the feeling and, and the thoughts and her body feeling and all those subjects. But it, it, I never really thought about, oh, she's, a little bit younger than I am, how can I go back to that feeling that I had in that age? Because I just try to understand Nora's feelings and forget about my really own ones. And um, yeah, so that was more in the rehearsals. Perfect. <laughs> 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 yeah, with Yella, um, because yeah, I, Yella is um, quite a lot older than Romy. And um, that was a question in the beginning if that would work or if Yella is too mature for the role. But um, yeah, in the casting, I, I felt like there was such an authentic love between them both and I was so touched by the performance like at the first moment so I was then pretty like sure that um, Yella can like go into this teenage girl and uh, although she's a bit older yeah and for me it really felt like going through all the things first time 
falling in love, first time drinking alcohol, all the things. It was like falling into them again because uh, I was born and raised in Berlin. I, I live close to the district where we uh, shot the movie and um, it was really wonderful to to imagine, to step in again. And um, yeah, it kind of felt very easy somehow, but it's also because Leonie um, has a very clear view and a very clear idea of what she wants to show and how she wants us to express and feelings. So she, yeah, she's really poetic and um it was it was a joy to shoot and to perform in that characters and it was also a joy to to shoot with lena and i don't know i think there was a big freedom while shooting lena your character nora um doesn't actually seem to have all that much dialogue a lot of her character is reflective and inward um, is it harder as an actor to work with those quiet moments? Uh, no, not at all. I love them. And I think it's even harder to, well, uh, sometimes it was hard to, while playing Nora, to have much dialogue because it felt so unnatural because, because I was so used to just watch and and feel and and then was like oh wow now now I'm really talking, <laughs> um, mm. but it, it depends on the character you're playing, and also um, about how good um, you prepared in the rehearsals I think, but um, I love playing that character and and watching all the other actors and their roles. It sounds like the rehearsals were really where this project uh, like found its footing and, and like came into place. Can you talk a little bit about um, the process and what it was like in rehearsals? Yeah, it was necessary for us because also like we didn't have a lot of money. So that meant that shooting time was pretty short and uh, we didn't have many takes. Sometimes we had just one take and um, I was very glad that we made the decision beforehand so that we had a long, good rehearsal and everyone exactly knew what they are, what they are playing. Um, yeah, as I said, like the, um, we've been working like with the two sisters, for example, we, we've been, um, trying to go in their past very much, um, with, uh, Yule and Nora, we've been uh, bringing, like, Lena and the other actress is also called Lena, they've been bringing photos when they've been children and talking about how they would feel in certain situation and how they were, so they really could feel like sisters. So we build up, like, a, a big background story and same with Romy she knew everything also because there's not um, in, in the film there's not so much been told about Romy's past and her situation just like a little little dots but we've been talking about and I think that was very uh, important for us that everyone knew how, where they have been coming from to um, feel that way in that certain situation. Yella, uh, Romy is more of like a confident and like secure character, which I feel like is sort of unusual for teenage girls. Can you talk a little bit about how you got into that role and, and how you saw that character? For us, it was, but it was also very important not to create an image of a perfect girl and not, we didn't want her to be too cool or too confident because in the end she uh she's yeah she does this thing with david which shows that she's actually also just a young girl searching for love and um but it was really nice to to play a character which kind of is okay with herself and um 
yeah, that, that yeah, maybe it is something which is not so well known or on, not so often shown. And but it, yeah, it was yeah. We what was important that we create a figure who is okay with her body. And I think many um, young women are so insecure. And to have a character, uh, to, to have a character next to her side. So for for Nora to have Omi at her side, side make her grow and confident, and that was yeah important. Was that clear, or was this too um, too um, favored? How do no, <laughs> that makes sense. No, what? but I can add something. I think that was a very important. Um, thing that Yella just said that we've been talking a lot about how do they feel in their bodies what kind of relationship do they have to their young bodies and um, and that was so important for Nora to see some someone like Romy who doesn't think about herself from the outside and is just how she is and um, yeah, that was very important for for her to also go her own way and yeah, be confident with herself, I guess. Yeah, one of the things that um, I like about this film too is that um, it's not such an issue for these characters to come out or be out. Um, I think they're far more progressive than what a lot of us are used to or experience, um, especially in film. Can you talk about why it was important for, um, for that to happen in this film? Like for there not to be the fanfare of, of coming out and it to be an issue? Uh, yeah, shall I start? Um, I think I wanted to first just tell a beautiful story about a young love and um, I mean to be honest they didn't clearly come out like Nora didn't really I mean she told this one guy on the balcony um, that she's in love with Romy but she didn't tell like her sister and and it wasn't that she didn't reach the point or they didn't reach the point in the relationship where they would walk hand in hand through the school or something but um and i think probably something like another story would have started at that point but what was important for me was that nora in like for herself was okay with it so i i think that everything like the way how she was feeling about her love in the end of the of the love story, she, she was ready for everything. And it didn't matter anymore if there would be any discrimination or whatever, it wouldn't have stopped her. And I think like, I rather wanted to tell about the inner strength that she became with um, loving Rumi than, than about the reactions that she would go through. And also it's like, um, I mean, of course, like sadly, also in a very open city like Berlin, of course, there's like still a lot of discrimination and um, I don't want to blurry that picture, but but also it is possible to have a beautiful love story when when we love an another girl and and Berlin can be a place where you can live pretty openly. And like the Cotti, for example, where we shot like that, it's such a melting pot of different cultures but also the gay culture is very big there and you have all the gay bars and gay clubs there so they are all living side by side and um, this is not the conflict of the area like they have like other conflicts there so um, yeah I think I was maybe also a bit tired of seeing so much like having young gay people always so, so that they're always having such hard times in films that I wanted to, yeah, just tell a beautiful love story, which also is sad because it's a young love and yeah. yeah. I would add something. Um, 
I think it's it's much more for Nora. It's much more about to find out where the line is between friendship and love, because this is maybe more difficult in the gay love because like um i also when i was like still i'm very close with all my um girlfriends and we touch each other and we go hand in hand and i think for nora and for young girls sometimes it's hard to find out um where love starts and if this is just a very very close friendship or am i really in love with this person and does one to love one person already means or has to be like um the like my sexuality what does it says about it and i think this is more the subject and the issues nora has can you talk about how nora uses um social media as a way to sort of parse her inner feelings um, it's more her bigger sister who uses a lot Instagram and she's making Insta stories all the time. And it's it's interesting because um, the dynamic between um, her uh, sister and her best friend is like, sometimes I felt like their phone because I was watching them making their Instagram stories um, in the beginning also. And um, it's like they are showing themselves a lot through Instagram and trying to maybe find their identity also through it. And I think because Nora is so indirectly involved in their Instagram stories, she doesn't really want it to, she, she's not so in it herself. And she doesn't want to be seen. That's also the point, I guess. Like she doesn't like um, the, uh, like this video di diary that she uh, does, that the film is starting. I always, or we always imagined that she would more do it for herself than really to like um, posted and to be seen by people because that is scary for her, like in in the beginning of the film more than than with her development than in the end. But yeah, mm -hmm. um, I would like to remind our audience that we will be taking audience questions. Um, so please drop a line in comment section of Facebook or YouTube or Cinepercent, and we'll get those questions to these folks soon. Um, and while we're talking about the social media and how like the video diary like cuts to a different ratio, can you talk about um, the look of the film that you wanted to achieve? Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to have this mixture between like being very close to the girls and being very like very much in the moment very like in the in like like an authentic reality however or <laughs> like however if, if that exists or not but um but also i wanted it to feel um like a memory like because i like at the same time because i always imagined that this is um the summer Nora will will always remember. So I kind of wanted to have this feeling of being in that moment, but at the same time knowing that you will always remember it. So that's why we decided for like um, this very like close, this camera very close to, to the characters, but at the same time, the colors being a bit too warm and a bit too blowy. And um, yeah, that was the the idea of the look or the feeling of the film. And then with the like different ratios, like we have this beginning with the cell phone video and then, um, we have this uh, like um, smaller format and then the screen opens at one at one um, 
part of the film. Um, I don't know, like there are many people who don't recognize it. And I think if you watch it on the laptop, even there are even more people because in the cinema, you really see the screen opening. Um, and, but I think uh, like Nora needs more space on the screen. So I wanted to have her more space and I don't really care if people recognize or not because I, I think you feel it somehow that she takes her space and um, yeah. And then we've been discussing at what point she's ready to take the space on the screen. And we actually had another point, like in, in the script, we had another point in mind, but then after cutting the film, we felt like she's not ready yet. So we've been just like, leaving her in that space for a bit longer <laughs> um, and decided for another point to open it up. Yeah. For me, it always feels like that I really fall into the movie while watching it. And I think it's the mixture of everything, the music, the, the pictures. It's so, I don't know, my, my heart is beating when I, when I watch it and it's so authentic. I am. And it's 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 um, crazy to say this about a movie where I took place, but when I watched it for the first time, I was like, I wasn't summer again. I was young again. I felt so touched and moved. Yeah, yeah. I think that the film does a really <laughs> elegant job of of dealing with with being young and having so many um, conflicts happening all at once, and it's just like you're yeah. in that moment and again. And for the first time, there is no, you, you can't, you can't really, you don't have something to compare with. When it happens the first time, it's so pure. Mm. Everything is pure. Oh, it's my father calling. And it's me. Sorry. It was my father. <laughs> Tell him we say hello. No, I just um. <laughs> him away. So we have an audience question. Um, what was screening at the Berlinale like for all of you? Exciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lassa, she, she never met someone being so nervous like Lena was at the premiere. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. But, yeah. I thought I Lena thought would well. get a heart attack. Really? <laughs> I was, what's going on here? No, it was really great. It was really emotional and very beautiful. And um, and the reaction of the people, they were amazing how the audience reacted to us. And yeah. they gave us so much love back. It, it, it was an honor. It was so, so, so beautiful. Yeah. We have another question. Um, which coming of age films were the director and actors inspired by? Um, do you want to start? I'm, I mean, obviously, I, I loved fucking Amal. Um, I, I, I loved uh, Blue's The Warmest Color. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think like that is pretty close to cocoon. Like, um, yeah. What about you, Bob? Call me by your name. It's beautiful. Mm. Some more. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it's also very that you have the inspiration for yourself as a person but then yeah get get free of all of it and then really create um something new on our own and not to have the pressure of yeah be be well in how do you say you know what i mean right yeah yeah but yeah, I think um, sometimes you get inspired 
although you don't really know that you've been getting inspired. For example, like there's a German film, it's actually a documentary that has been shot in the same area. It's like, I think 10 years ago it came to cinema and I saw it 10 years ago and now everybody was asking like, like, I'm sure you've been in, inspired by Prinzessin Bad, it's called. And I was like, yeah, probably, but actually I don't really remember it at all. So, you know, sometimes you see stuff that somehow sticks inside of you, but it's not in your head anymore, it's somewhere else. And I think that's also the beautiful thing about cinema. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. One of my favorite scenes in the film is when the students are sharing their abstract presentations and Romy's is set to David Bowie's Space Odyssey. Um, and I think it's a really beautiful moment, especially because Bowie is so influential and an icon to young people and queer people and outsiders. Can you talk about that choice? Um, I wanted somehow I wanted something that people know, like, because of this, um, like, I wanted to have a song where you have, like, where I knew that most of the audience probably has a relationship to it. And maybe, like, the song had an influence in their lives or, like, a certain moment that they remember or something. Um, and that's a song that also means like a lot to me personally. And also I wanted to have something that fits to Romy and which is like um, in our world, like maybe would be an obvious choice, but in the teenager world, it's so not. Like in the teenager world, it's something so weird to listen to something like David Bowie. And I, I found that beautiful because um, I remember when I've been in school, I've been like, uh, I, I was very bad in school and I had my, my head everywhere, but not uh, like, not in the topics that have been discussed. So I've been writing like um, lyrics of songs on the table and, um, this song like one person who has been in my class made like fun about it because he thought it was so weird and then I left school and he like finished school and then three years later he he called me and he was like hey I was sitting on your place reading the lyrics and actually now it's my favorite song so and I think that's that's like beautiful on youth that sometimes you find something so weird, but then, you know, some years later you, you love it and yeah. Yeah. And I wonder if that's, you know, how like Nora felt in that moment too, because there's that beautiful shot with her just staring and the camera, the projector is like lighting from behind and it's such a beautiful moment. Um, yeah. We have time for one more question. Um, what is everybody working on next? Do you want to start? <laughs> uh, yes, um, I'm at Fiera. I'm at a uh, Volksbühne. It's a big house in Berlin, and I play theater. And it's it's fun. It's different to film, but it's a new experience. And I've been working there for one year now. And then Corona came, and we had to stop. And it was a pity because we just have two years. And um, but now it all started again, and um, yeah, I do theater. Do, it was my pronunciation pronunciation right, or how how do you pronounce it? Theater. Theater. Can you say it, Dominic? Yeah. yeah was theater. It good? All good. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget how to. I would just love to add something to the question before, because I think for me the scene is also about the music of course but i also love the video um, um on the screen because it, it means so much in the moment that all those things 
are destroyed and then rebuilt themselves. And it's so much about that nothing has to be, has to stay destroyed if you don't want to. And it's like, yeah, I also love the scene and the moment, um, but I just wanted to say that I also love the, the video, <laughs> not just the movie, both. Yeah. <laughs> and Thank what I'm doing very... next, it's, um, for example, um, I played one of the main roles in a, um, a series who's coming out um, next year, I think. It's called um, Wir Kinder vom Bahnhof Zoo. It's, um, on a, it's based on a book and um, it's coming on Amazon Prime, I think. And then also um, another cinema movie about um, young women after the um, Second World War. Um, who are trying to um, understand the way of how soldiers um, behave with women after having experienced war and most women stayed in the city and it's about that subject. Yeah, it's called Trumamiki or it's gonna be called Trumamiki. Excellent. Cool. Leonie? And I'm, yeah, I'm in the process of writing two new scripts um, at the same time and uh, that is new for me to switch between stories and um, yeah it's uh, I'm excited when this this is going to happen yeah well it's so exciting um, I'm looking forward to all of your future projects um, congratulations Thanks. on a really wonderful film Thank you. Um, that's all the time we have. Um, I'd like to once again uh, thank the sponsor of this film, uh, Johnston, Kinney, and Zuleika LLP, as well as the community partners who help promote the event. That's German Films Service and Marketing, Lyric Center for LGBTQ plus youth and Berlin and beyond. And thank you, of course, to our Frameline viewers. You have one day left to view all the rest of these films. Um, so jam in as many as you can and make sure to vote for this one uh, right now. And thanks all for joining. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Take care.